Hello, my name is Sheila McRae, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Winston. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like your cigarette should? Of course. Like your cigarette should. Winston tastes good like your cigarette should. Try Winston. From New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Howdy, and welcome to I've Got a Secret. And we'll start right off, not too surprisingly, by meeting the members of our panel. First of all, Betsy Palmer. Next, Bill Cullen. Next, Bess Meyerson. And next, Henry Morgan. Hi. You're all ready to play the game, aren't you, oh, panel? Yeah. Oh, boy. Some night they're going to fool me and say no. Anyway, we might as well meet our first contestants. Here we are. <laughs> Jump right in there, make yourselves comfortable, and tell us your names, please, and where you're from. Mark Fratellone, Miami, Florida. Tony Malassi, Binghamton, New York. Uh, Mark and Tony are old friends, in spite of the fact that they now live in different cities. And they share, panel, an amazing secret, really amazing, I share it with a gentleman who is backstage now. We'll meet him a little bit later. Now, Mark, you met the uh, gentleman backstage about a year ago in Miami, I understand. And uh, as I get the story, he was a complete stranger until you went up to him in a restaurant, introduced yourself, and began talking to him. Now, if you'll whisper to me, we'll find out why you did that. All right. Now, shortly after you met him, you introduced him to Tony here. Uh, and Tony, how does the gentleman backstage figure into your part of the secret? Hmm. <laughs> Panel, this is definitely something of a brain teaser. The clue concerns the information you've just heard, of course, and if I may suggest, it might be a good idea to start with the reason that Mark introduced himself to the man backstage. So we'll start the questioning with Henry Morgan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, does this man look familiar to you? Yes, he did. Uh, did he look like, um, Tony? Yes, he did. Was he related to him? Ha, ha, ha. Yes, he is. It was his father? <laughs> no, it was not. Was his brother? That's correct. You're off to a flying start, Henry. You practically got it. $20 down, 60 to go. Betsy? It was his twin brother. Right. Now, that sort of thing happens all the time, and of course, it wouldn't be enough to get a fellow on this program, so there's a little bit more to it. All right. Um, you're not beach boys, are you? No. No. So you didn't get in trouble in museums or anything like no. that? No. All right. Did you do this in Florida? Or did it happen? Is it something that happened to you, or well, did you do you've it? already established what happened. He went oh, up Oh, the to happening was the twin, the yeah. meeting of the twin. And a buzzer went off. Forty dollars down. Bill Cullen. Mark introduced Tony to his twin brother because Tony, up to then, didn't know he even had a twin. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Oh. Very good. I suppose, Mark, uh, the thing that made you go up to a complete stranger and speak to him was not that you thought it was his twin brother, but you thought it was Tony, is that right? It was Tony, that's correct. I heard the uh, voice in the restaurant, and I began searching out the voice because of its resemblance to Tony. Uh -huh. When I found him, uh, he also looked like Tony, so immediately I excitedly explained to him how I had met a man in New York who was a complete identity to him. And uh, the next thing, you know, Tony, you got a couple of phone calls. Tell us about those. Well, first, uh, the secretary in Buffalo, New York, who worked for me, she got a phone call from Mark asking my birth date. And the secretary said May 28, 1938. And he told Roger, and Roger says, well, that's when I was born. Uh -huh. uh, now, 
from here on, you know, oh, go ahead, finish, whatever you were going well, to say. Well, then, that evening, I received a phone call from this man, who was my identical twin brother, for the but first why time. Why? Why why never never well, we'll, never we'll tell you all about why the parents didn't know as we meet uh, his twin brother, Roger Brooks. Let's go over and do that. <laughs> Now, uh, Roger, you didn't know, or we know that Tony didn't know that you existed, but did you know that he existed? Uh, yes, uh, Tony was uh, adopted at six weeks old, mm -hmm. and I was in an orphanage home, and uh, I was adopted at five years old, and later on in life my parents told me. I see that somewhere you had a twin brother, but you never met him. Were you ever close to meeting him? Were you ever on his trail at all? Yes, uh, when I was in the Air Force, I was stationed in Japan, and a stranger came up to me and says, don't I know you? You look exactly like someone I know that played basketball for a Catholic high school and being to New York. I says, no, it couldn't have been me. Why is that? Well, uh, I'm Jewish, and I played for the <laughs> Hebrew. So you were raised in the Jewish faith, and he was raised as that, a Catholic. That's right. It's a fascinating story. Now, you know, psychologists have never really been able to settle uh, whether hereditary or environmental influences are the more important, and they often use twins who have been separated to try to uh, learn about this point. Uh, once you guys got together, did you discover that you had any similarities uh, in your experiences? Well, we found out, Steve, that on the first night that we both used the same toothpaste, uh, which was an off-brand, we smoked the same cigarettes, used the same aftershave lotion, and we also found out that we had identical scars on our left arm on the inside of our elbow. Fascinating. How'd you get your scar? Uh, I fell on top of a Coke bottle when I was about three years old. And you, Roger? And I fell on top of a bicycle. <laughs> Remarkable. Now, they've also told me uh, d before the show that they have the uh, same tastes in a number of respects, and this led to an interesting uh, incident last Christmas, wasn't yes, it? Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> last year at Christmas time, I sent my brother a uh, turtleneck sweater with matching socks. Uh -huh. And wouldn't you know it, he sent me the very same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you have gotten together, what are your plans as regards each other, that is? Uh, well, since Roger is living in Miami, Steve, and uh, I'm presently living in Philadelphia, we're still separated, so we would like to get jobs, you know, in the same area. Well, I wish we could help out, but uh, technically we're not allowed to do that sort of thing. Uh, personally, I know that I don't know of any jobs for uh, a couple of very bright, deserving young brothers named Tony Malazzi and Roger Brooks, but if I should... <laughs> If I should hear of something, I'm going to write to you and care if I've got a secret, 51 West 52nd Street, New York. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining me. Thank you. Really remarkable story. We'll be back in a minute, but uh, first, get a load of this. Winston tastes good, like your cigarette should. Yes, unless your cigarette is Winston, you're missing out on the best taste in filter cigarettes. Winston, America's largest selling filter cigarette. And it tastes it. Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. Like your cigarette should. Try Winston. Now let's meet our next contestant, please. Nice to have you with us, sir. Would you tell us your name and where you're from? Jeffy Lydiard, uh, Southall, Middlesex, London. That's Mr. Lydiard. Lydiard. Uh, panel. Uh, he is with us tonight as the result of a joint venture that he and two friends of his undertook back in England not long ago. So, Mr. Lydiard, if you'll whisper to me, we'll show the audience just what you and your two friends did. Uh-huh. And uh, what happened as a result of that? Hmm. And audience, there's one piece of information I think you'll find particularly interesting, additionally. <laughs> uh, 
The clue to Mr. Lydiard's secret uh, panel concerns something he did. We'll start the game with Bess Meyerson. Mr. Lydiard, this thing that you did with your two friends, was it an adventure of sorts? Uh, no. Was it done in England? <coughs> yes. Only, or did you travel? Uh, no, only in England. I see. Was it a physical thing that you did? No. Was it some kind of a contest that you entered? Hmm, you might so describe it loosely. Uh, um, perhaps not in the strict sense that you might mean, Bess. I'll go Did off by, uh, yeah. Half and off. Half and off. I like half that. And off. Half and off. Twenty dollars down. Henry? What would you say, the contest? Half and off. Ah. Was it in any, or oh, was there, um, any money involved in this? Uh, yes. Could you in any way have considered it, uh, are we uh, working for a prize? Uh, yes. Oh, would I be interested in who offered the prize? Mm. No. Um, the um, other two, was it established they were men? Pardon? The other two uh, with you, were they men? Yes. And were they um, in your same uh, age group, uh, line of work, something like that? Uh, yes. Uh huh. It's an irrelevant factor, however, Henry. All righty, I'll forget it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that you did, did it require any particular kind of training? No. Forty dollars down, forty to go, Betsy. Did you win a large sum of money? Yes. Did it have to do with horses? No. Did it have to do with racing of some sort? No. You stole it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, ah. Uh, he made it. <laughs> no, no, it had to do with money. Did you get this money cerebrally speaking? I'm not with you there. No. <laughs> uh, let me put it this way. <laughs> let me put it this way. Next question, Betsy. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say so. No. It didn't have anything to do with your head. All right. Sixty dollars down. Go, Cullen. Cerebrally was in what race? <laughs> yeah. He won by a head, whatever yeah. race it was. In Great Britain, they have the national football pool, or something like that. Did you and two friends go together and purchase a ticket, which eventually won on either the football association football, you call it, don't you, or soccer or something, and win a large sum of sweepstakes? Yes. yes. We don't have to bother about getting to the penny, do we, or no? Well, all right, then uh, not too long ago, Jeffrey Lydiard and his associates were poor but honest working men, and today they are worth a fortune. My friend here is rich now. And, uh, <laughs> you see how quickly they change, my friend? Just like that. No, seriously, they all learn new money now to hard work, clean living, and thinking, and the right thoughts, and all that stuff, and investing 40 cents each in the English soccer pool, winning almost one million dollars. Uh. <laughs> Jeffrey, uh, before you made your first million, That's what did you do for a living? Uh, I was a doll writer, instrument doll writer. Uh, what? Instrument doll writer. You know, you... Dial. Oh, dial. Dials, you know? You wrote on dial. Yeah. <laughs> sure. uh, if you don't mind my asking, what was your salary? Uh, about $45 a week. This is in American money, you know? The equivalent, yes. Yeah. Now, the nice thing about the money that he won, panel, as we've already let the audience know, is that he doesn't have to uh, figure out how much tax he owes the government because they play a little differently over there. It's all tax-free. Hey, Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any... Uh, <laughs> he's, giving up, he's giving up his citizenship. I just started to sing. No, no, but I would like to sing two courses of Rural Britannia. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, did you have any system you applied to win? System? Uh, no, I just, uh, you know, took their goals uh, for and against, that's all. Um, How was that again? I just took their goal averages, you know, for and against. We have various teams and their averages, you know. And I'll just work on their averages every week. I oh. suppose so. <laughs> now, you know... <laughs> now, Jeffrey, there have been many stories, uh, many stories published over the years about other people who have won large sums of money in the soccer pool or some pool someplace. 
And it seems that for a lot of these people, uh, their instant fortune led to instant trouble. Have you found, outside of having to put up with my impertinence this evening, have you found it hard to adjust to being uh, rich overnight? No, I just haven't adjusted myself. <laughs> Are you planning to bet on the soccer pool again? Sure, I'll do it every week, just the same. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could go for a couple of new partners, I got about 50 cents. <laughs> We wish you and uh, Mrs. Lydiard uh, good luck. We hope you continue to have fun, and thanks for coming all the way from England to share this fascinating story. Thank you. What did you say over there, Henry? What did you say? You said to him, I want to wish you good luck, and I said, Good luck! <laughs> Well, we'll meet our special guest for the evening in a minute after this massage. Your message. Let's bring him back. It was like something out of a spy movie. Everywhere I drove, there he was, right behind me. Actually, he was Ron Stanton, professional test driver, following me in a Texaco gasoline mileage test. Texaco had given us identical Rambler classics and identical amounts of fuel. Mine was Sky Chief localized for the climate in this area. Ron got a blend they deliberately hadn't localized. Ron followed me for days on short hops around town. I thought sure I'd run dry first. Then late the third day, the mileage expert ran dry. But I had enough gasoline left to get him back to the station. How come? Well, only Texaco gasolines are localized in all 50 states. Localizing gave me faster low temperature warm-ups, so I got better mileage. Better mileage than the expert. You can trust your car to the man who wears the star. The biggest friend your car has ever had. Now it's time to meet our special guest for the evening, the beautiful half of one of the most talented couples in show business. Here is Sheila McRae. <laughs> Uh, from the looks of this card here, I uh, <laughs> guess you're studying a foreign language, are you? Well, no, not exactly. Actually, those are song lyrics, you know. That's true. Oh, American I see. music is so popular everywhere in the world that a lot of singers, including myself, are learning to sing in foreign languages. Uh huh. And uh, that's actually uh, Portuguese. The I see. I well, do you know what these words mean? Do you understand oh, no, the No, I can't even pronounce them, you know. I just have them written out for me phonetically so that I can sing them. Oh, I right see. Here. Well, that must be what's under here, That's then. it. See? Look how different it looks. Phonetically. See? Un dia chegara. I see. Enables you to read that right. kind of stuff. Well, now, I imagine that European singers uh, probably go through exactly the same thing uh, in reverse, so to speak, that when they try to sing an American song in English, they have to have it written out phonetically, too. Well, they that? do. They do, yeah. Uh -huh. And I'll show you how they do this, you see. We take... Shall I sing this part, or should we go sure. on to the next one? This one. Yeah. Don't sing this. No, because this next one. Show the next card. This one really is for you. Right, we have a little man down in a hole down here. He tells us everything. He knows he everything we're doing. <laughs> and he tells us phonetically. How do you like that? <laughs> this is a very, very famous song. See this? This is a famous song, and it's for you. Jail, jail, za gongs ul gia. Yeah. Juat za jet du wiki a Oh, very good, very good. You know what it says? I know what yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You do? Yeah. Oh, hail, hail, hail again. Wow! Oh. 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 That's uh, Spanish because the J. I bet that's because you all know Jose Jimenez, and he, he for this say for the J. Hey. I see. Well, now of course we're going to have uh, one of these little games for each of you panelists to play. We'll start with Betsy, and we'll show you a card. And first, you can read it phonetically. See if you can figure out what song you've got. Now this is a line from a song, Betsy. It's not necessarily a first line. And uh, if you spoke Polish, you could translate this immediately. This now, thing right here. We're going to let the audience at home and here in the theater know it's what this is by superimposing the words written in normal English. All right. No singing, audience. Uh, Just take a crack at it phonetically, Betsy, and see what uh, you come out with. Wike, wike, zen, wike, can't, uh. I. Does that mean anything to you? Anything at all? Uh, 
It's not your if, turn. If, it's, uh, let's see. Well, yeah. the only thing, why can't I? If birds fly over the rainbow, why then right. can't I? Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I want you to grow mine. I want you to grow mine. Here it is. Look, phonetically. Here we go. Somewhere the land of Well, now, Bill knew what Betsy's was. Let's see if he knows what his own is. I never know what my own is. Yours is a beauty, Bill. Isn't it a lovely thing? Look at that. You know what it means? Say it. A jewel tadged. Let's let the audience see what Bill's working out there. Well, yeah, audience, it. and then tell me. Okay, go it. ahead, Bill. A jewel tadged Carell's <laughs> buying sang badger quadger. <laughs> just uh, uh, Baja Quasher. Uh, <laughs> you want to try? Yeah, the jewel got to be you. You tie carols. Oh, being. Be being sung <laughs> by the choir. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, Bill, you have to sing it. This is Russian. We have I to do? sing it just the way it is. <coughs> In my key, Norman. <clears throat> Says that's rusting on an open fire. Jack Frost looking at your nose. You'll find carols being sung by Jack Wager and folks dress it up like Eskimos. You know, we could have a whole Russian group. We can go over and sing for them yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. Spetsiba, nah. Bill, Spetsiba. And now it's Bess's turn, of course. What language? Well, we won't tell you the language. You try it first. To the audience, please. Uh, we'll let the audience know just what it is first. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, phonetically. There are a couple of letters in there I don't even recognize. Zipa, <laughs> uh, Kree. Three paws we are to get mm -hmm. oozies. Oozies, oozies. Um, Where'd you get those? Jeepers eyes? creepers. Right. Where'd you get those? Right. 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 Oh, man, Dad. Come on, let's we'll sing it. Sing it like they yeah. will. Jeep paws, creep paws. Where do you get, get those peep paws? Jeep paws, creep what it is as Henry's taking Isn't a look at it. Isn't that something? <laughs> Try it phonetically, Henry. I did. <laughs> you already did. This time out loud. Do you know? Wee nee raba. Wee raba. what language it's in, Henry? Yeah. It is in Japanese. Oh, is that so? Yes, it is. Japanese, you think you can try it? It must be where it is. Come on. Wow. Try it again, Henry, out loud. Sometimes it comes to you out loud. The W-H, see, that, that, that has to be like a... Can you go Barring. like that, Henry? Make Barring. a big... A f... A f... I'm fluffing and nothing happens. Does the audience know what this is? You better give me more of a clue. Yeah. Toss me a music. It's a beauty. We'll lay it on you in Japanese. Shall we show you Henry? No. Bill, what is it? I don't think it doesn't make sense. Say it again. in love with Right. 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 Right.
the eye yeah, becomes a facial. Ridiculous. They got no Stop. F. What? The Japanese has no F. Oh, so the poor no people. F, so they have to do it that Sheila, way. Sheila, sing a few lines for them. Well, we in rubber, we so rubber. He's flooring, we make we rebel. in rubber, we so rubber. He's breaking the floor. All the poor people. Oh, no wonder they lost. Oh. <laughs> The, just, a just a gigolo. Just a gigolo everywhere. Yeah. I right. What language is this, Sheila? Uh, this is Italian. Oh, this is the Polish. Yeah. This is Wait. Polish. <laughs> I put my glasses on. <laughs> yeah, this is the Polish. Lay Did a few you, you got it already, on. right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just, just a gigolo everywhere I go. People, people know the part I'm playing. <laughs> This is Italian. Chicks and ducks. Right. Right. What language is that? This, this is Italian phonetic. Italian phonetic. Chicks and ducks. We got a new show here called Sing Along with the U.N. Little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Well, Sheila, you've come up with a marvelous idea here, and I think we may have a spin-off of some kind. So we'll uh, spin off right now for a minute. After this message from our sponsor, we'll be back, and then it's hard to say what'll happen. <laughs> Remember how golfers used to look? Times change, tastes change, and I've changed too. To tempo. As tastes keep changing, chances are you'll change too. Sooner or later, you'll probably want to try the taste of a charcoal tip cigarette. So why not make it the one with the taste that makes the change worthwhile? Why not Tempo? Why not today? This is Molly Parnas. This is Molly Farnes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've just been informed that this is Molly Farnes. <laughs> or as they say in Japanese, Mari Parno. <laughs> Whatever. You know, all of us have a stake in keeping the educational standards high in America's colleges, so help keep the flow of knowledge coming. Give to the college of your choice now, and let's put Bill Cullen back in school. Yes. Right? <laughs> Good night, Sheila. Good night, Good night Gordon. Good night, Jane. Good night, Carol. Good night, everybody. I've got a secret as we brought to you tonight by Tempo Filter Cigarettes. Gowns by Bill Black. Walter Cronkite reports directly from Cape Kennedy when CBS News begins its selective Gemini 9 coverage with the launches in color tomorrow morning. Now stay tuned as Lucy gets her first break in the movies as a stuntman on The Lucy Show, next in color. This program was pre-recorded. This is John Cannon speaking.